Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and it is full review time on this little beauty. Um, I don't think that I've shown this knife on the channel yet. This is a knife that was loaned to me by Lefty EDC, who you'll find linked down below. Kevin is one of my best friends, and uh, I adore the guy. He's just awesome. So, he asked me for a while if I wanted to borrow this, and I was real busy for a little while, and so I kept kind of turning him down, and he kept persisting that it's a knife I really need to check out. And then I finally got some free time and space that I was like, okay, I can bring it in and we'll just do it. I just haven't been doing many loaners at all lately. Um, and then, uh, who was it? Tier 1 Gear Reviews had it before me. And then, so he was the one who sent it to me. And it got delayed for like weeks. And on the tracking, it said like the train it was on derailed or something crazy. It was really terrifying that this custom Gavco was just out there somewhere on a derailed train and then finally it ended up getting to me but when it arrived it was such a busy week that i was like i'd already put off unboxing it for a day or two and i just didn't have time to get the camera out so i was like screw it i'm just gonna get it out start carrying it start using it and uh get to the review and so i think this is the first time you're seeing it here on the channel is in this full review which is not the way i typically operate but may increasingly become the case as time goes on because um I would rather make sure that I'm getting to full reviews than unboxings. Um, I like the unboxings. I think they're fun. It's a fun way to experience the new knife in front of people. But um, yeah, that, we'll see what the future holds. Anyway, this is a custom Gavco. Um, I believe the steel on this guy is Nitro V. I'm fairly certain that's what Kev told me. This model is called the Nurse. Uh, this one's a liner lock. I do believe sometimes he does them as frame locks, but you can see there are these scales that are kind of shadow boxed on the knife. So you can still see, it's almost like a bolster lock in a way that you can see the way the lock bar is cut there. But um, liner lock, I, I think would be the most technically accurate term for this. Sheep's foot, blade shape, like I said, Nitro V, titanium, everything else. He does this really aggressive kind of like blasted finish um, on his knives a lot. It's really cool to see in person. Uh, I've handled a couple of custom Gavcos in the past. I've never owned one and uh, I've never carried one or used one. So this has been an exciting moment. And I think honestly, if I were picking a custom Gavco for myself, it might just be literally this knife. It is really, really good. So before I jump into Ergo's carry cutting action, all that stuff, um, I'll just reiterate like how much I've carried and used this knife. So it's been in my possession for probably two weeks now. Um, I've carried it at least seven or eight times. Um, half the time as a secondary, roughly. Half the time, roughly, as a primary because it's big enough that I can get away with that, um, but also small enough I've gotten away with carrying it as a secondary. Um, I've used it lightly because it's a custom it's not mine it's very nice i i don't feel comfortable abusing somebody else's knife i didn't even ask kev like hey are you comfortable with me using it hard because i wasn't going to so it's been mostly tape a little bit of cardboard i've run it through some paper um i did <laughs> there was a moment where i was cutting an apple um and i had this knife in my pocket and the KUF 4.0, which is the same story. I also didn't show my unboxing of this and I need to review it now, but um, I was going to cut the apple with the KUF 4.0, but I was like, I'm going to try just like a slice of the apple with this. So I didn't even cut the whole apple with this. I've cut a few now with the KUF, but I did cut a slice out of the apple with this to just feel how it would do for that and then immediately cleaned it right off. So I was gentle with this knife. You can't tell I was here. There aren't any marks on this knife that are from me, which is always good on a loaner to not mark it up. Um, but yeah, the edge that's on it is fantastic and it's still pristine just like when it got to me. So Anyway, that's how much I've carried and used the knife. Uh, let's start with Ergos. So ergonomically, this handle works really well for me. Um, it's definitely one of those knives that even for my medium glove, but fill them out real well hands, um, when I don't choke up into this designated choil, I can barely in like a hammer grip get all four fingers on. But as soon as I'm saber grip, my pinky is kind of off back here. Now it's not an uncomfortable spot for my pinky to be hanging off. It's still kind of getting enough traction and I'm able to wrap around up here and still pull in the tip of my finger. So it's a usable handle back here, but I never 
hold it like this, if I'm being honest. Like, I mean, I have felt in my hand how it is like this, but any time that I've got this knife out and I'm using it, I'm just up in the choil. It's kind of like a Spyderco Pair 3 in its dimensions and the way that it feels in hand. It's just most comfortable and pleasant to be in that choil, which it's a designated choil. That's definitely the intended purpose is to be up here. And then you just get a lot of control over this blade as well. And that cutting edge feels almost like an extension of my hand. Um, so yeah, choked up really, really great. Choked back, it's fine. But I just, like if there was no choil, I'd probably still be saying these are pretty good ergos, right? But there's a choil, so that makes it really, really good. Um, hammer grip and saber grip, both comfortable. Draw cut is actually pretty good, just like this. Um, it's surprisingly all right. <laughs> I like that. Reverse grip, very comfortable in this because it's more of a hammer. I'm not like tilting my fingers. I do fit everything in just fine. I'm able to wrap my thumb around. So reverse grip is good. Reverse grip draw cut is the least comfortable way to hold this knife, but also the least common way that someone's going to be cutting something with this knife. So, um, and if I needed to make a cut like that, I totally could. The clip just starts to get a little bit hot spotty right there. And the point right here, I can feel more. So not ideal in that grip, but again, that's a weird grip to be holding a knife like this in. So, um, yeah, ergonomically, I like it quite a bit. The choil is like the the shining star of this show. It's really, really good up here. The way that this spine is textured is also really nice because I don't like jimping, but I don't mind this texture at all. This texture is actually done really well and it gives me a little more security with my thumb and I like that. It's just, it's well figured out. This model seems like uh, this is what you're supposed to do. This grip right here is where my hand wants to go and it's masterfully figured out for it to be right there and to feel great. Um, let's talk action for a second. So obviously you have one method of deployment and it is this gigantic hole. <laughs> um, I don't know if you'd call that a slot as much as you'd call it a hole or what. I'm just going to stick with hole for now, but um, my favorite thing holes over studs. I prefer holes to studs and to flippers. Like holes are my love language on knife deployment. <laughs> sounded weird to say, but um, this one is done really, really well. It's one of those where you could be down real low and it works. You could be in the middle and it works. You could go up high and it works. Um, it does also work for thumb flicking quite comfortable to do that. You do have a little bit of interference with the scales kind of coming out right here, where you can see if you're pushing forward with your thumb, you do kind of gr like glance off of that, but it's never stopped me from deploying the knife. <laughs> and it's not like gouging my finger. It's not uncomfortable. It's just the thing that's there that I'm kind of running into, but isn't actually like stopping me. So I, I don't even think about it so much, but it's there. But yeah, middle finger flick. It's just awesome. The detent on this is perfectly tuned for it. Um, on closure, it's pretty freaking free droppy. It's really, really just tuned well. Super fun knife to play with. Um, and I will say too, like the fact that I can thumb flick it pretty well helps it to be even more fun than if I could only middle finger flick it. It's always great to have multiple deployment options, even if I am middle finger flicking it most of the time. And then the fact that the hole is so broad that I'm able to, like I can even get in here with my ring finger and just pop it open, or I bet I can use my pointer finger totally and pop it open. So like, it's just fun because the hole being as broad as it is, you have options with your fingers. Let me see if I can pinky flick it open. Get my hand just right here. Give it the best chance for success. Oh, almost. Try it again. Close. I'm not getting... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Didn't feel like enough leverage. Um, but yeah, it's a fun knife to play with. The action is just... It's great. On open and closure, it's really nice. The detent is set well. Everything about it is fun. Um, let's talk carry. So carrying this knife it's not exactly skinny this way right because of that big broad hole how tall the blade is it's not a thin knife in this direction but it's not like crazy thick in that direction either it's not crazy thick this way it does feel for its like a blade length and especially cutting edge length like kind of a chunky little sucker um, I think that's part of why ergonomically it works so well for being kind of a small knife that feels so hand filling but in pocket it's not super thin, super light. It's not like 
It's not trying to be an ultra, like, disappear in your pocket style knife. Um, that wasn't the direction I think Gavco was going. It was more like hand filling and, I don't know, like, <laughs> he went for things other than slimness and pocket, which is totally fair. That said, it's not crazy thick, it's not crazy heavy, nothing about it is particularly uncomfortable in pocket, but it's just not like a carry dream. Um, the pocket clip as well is super long, <laughs> it's like a really, really long pocket clip. It's not going to be deep carry, so you get about that much sticking out of your pocket. Um, it's just not like knocking out all of my preferences on carry, but that said, I haven't had like any reason to particularly complain once it's in pocket. Slides in and out just fine. In pocket, it's not like gouging me anywhere. There's no sharp points that have become a problem. Everything is comfortable in pocket. It's just not like, wow, this is redefining how great a knife can be to carry in pocket. It's just fine. Um, what does that leave us with? Cutting. So uh, Gavco does a lot of like chisel grinds and stuff. This one is not. This one's V-ground. And... It's a flat grind. You can see we've got kind of a swedge going the whole length of the blade. That is not a flat up there. That's a swedge, which is ground, and it gives it this cool dimension. It also follows this line and this curve, which has a, a cool look to it. The grind, too, you can see the way that these plunges are set in. It just looks really aesthetically cool to me. Um, it's not thin behind the edge, <laughs> I'm being honest. It's not an absolute tank. It's not like, wow, this thing is unacceptably thick behind the edge, but it's not thin. Uh, when I was cutting the apple with it, it was, it sliced it okay, but it was doing a little bit of kind of a splitting it while it was cutting it type of thing. Um, going through things like tape and paper and cardboard, it's done really well. I think that's partially because this edge that's on here is a phenomenal edge. Um, I don't know if this is the original edge from Gavco or if it's been sharpened somewhere along the way, but the actual final edge that's on here is really, really good. And the geometry is just okay. It's, I don't know, for me, like a knife with this blade length <coughs> and cutting edge length, this isn't going to be a super hard user knife because of its size category, at least for me. Maybe some people are out there and they super hard use really short knives. I'm not that way. Most of my like really hard use folders are happen to be big folders. And so this being on the smaller end and me putting it in kind of the same category as like the Spyderco Para 3, part of why I love the Para 3 every time I carry it is because that tall full flat grind comes down to a reasonably thin angle and it's a good slicer. And I like good slicing blades that are this small. And this one just feels a little bit obtuse behind the edge for my preferences. Um, I think a thinner blade stock would have been fine. It might change the action. It would reduce the weight. Like it would do a number of things to do a thinner blade stock. Or maybe just a hollow grind to get that thin right behind the edge. Something like I would probably prefer it if we could just get this a little thinner right behind the edge. But again it's totally functioned fine. Like even for slicing the apple, it did it. It wasn't like making a mess of the apple I was cutting. And with this incredible edge that's on it, as a cutting tool, I, I haven't been disappointed by it. I just also haven't been wowed by it. So I guess that's the best way I can put it. So yeah, we've talked ergos, we've talked carry, we've talked cutting, we've talked action, we've done it all. Um, I don't think there's anything else really left to say about this. I want one, uh, if I had this knife, in my collection. I'm sure it would make it in pocket fairly often. I enjoy it. Um, I love the looks of it. It's one of those that's cool and different. I'm not usually like an acid stone wash kind of guy, but the way the acid stone wash is done on this blade, the way that the like blasting is done on these handles, it has a really cool look and feel to it. And it's an eye-catching knife. Like this knife also looks like a custom to me, whereas some custom knives are so like arguably like perfect that it's like it seems not that custom it seems very like machine made right um granted it's the age of cnc so a lot of customs are completely cnc made but this has these like little evidences of hand work on it right like i can see little spots in the finish where it's just one notch away from perfect or one little spot here in the uh i don't know if you'll see it but at the end of the whole there's like a little deformation on the blade itself, just this little almost notch that is just not quite perfect in there, you know, and 
functionally, I'm sure it's fine. It's not deep or anything. It's not like it wouldn't give me stress if this was my knife, but I can just see that at like that end of the blade, there's a little bit of like a burble, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's not totally a hundred percent perfect everywhere. The way that he does the finish on the spine, the way he's like cutting into this, that's a very handmade looking feature. And when it's done poorly, it looks cheap and crappy, but here he's done a really good job at it where it just looks like evidence of the maker. It doesn't look like something covering up a mistake or anything weird like that. It looks like a deliberate, like he put in this kind of distressed textured finish and I like it. I just, I think it's done well. So anyway, um, I guess that'll be it on my full review. Super cool knife. It's going back to Kev today, so I'll miss having it around. I'm sure he's going to be excited to get it back since I'm the second person to have it and it had that long delay in between us. So um, thank you, Kev. Appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed to Kevin's channel, Left EDC, do so. He'll be linked down below. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.